Does Cal make any noise in the new look ACC? Eh, I don't know. That could make more than you think. Perhaps Thomas Dunn at WriteForCalifornia.com joining me here on the show. What do you make of Cal's offseason right now, Thomas, as they go into the ACC? They were a 500 team last year, top 20 transfer portal class. We'll dive into that a little bit more. But what are you feeling right now about the Bears? It's a, it's a common theme across these last few off seasons. It's intrigue. Is the process there? Is the execution there? Is the offense coming along? Is the defense going to come along with them? Is the special teams going to be the third part of the pie that finally slots into place? Right now, after spring football, Cal, they're an unfinished product right now. That's there's no that's no stretch to say that. I think the offense is distinctly ahead of the defense. Uh, I've been fooled the last two years by the defensive lockdowns during spring practice, and I am no longer going to fall into that line of thinking until they prove otherwise out on the field. Uh, there have been lots of changes, lots of shifting around, lots of new faces and new places and new people that really need to prove themselves because Cal is at an inflection point right now heading into a new conference. They survived the first round of conference realignment, and good results will only help them when the next round inevitably comes along. Yeah, and the ACC is facing an existential crisis, and Cal might have to ask themselves, are we staying here? Are we going back to the Pac-12? Are we going in independent? What what exactly is, is happening there? But in terms of football results on the field, well, that that's, of course, determined by the players that you have. And, and a couple guys come in from SEC schools, no, no less, in the secondary to go play for the ACC-bound California Golden Bears. Josiah Wagner from Oklahoma, Ryan Yates from, uh, from LSU. These guys ha- had offers to go other places. How important is it for Justin Wilcox to have landed uh, this pair of guys in the secondary, a position that he coaches very closely? Uh, it's very important because last year I thought the secondary would be a big strength of the Cal team, and it frankly wasn't. And part of that can be shifted up to the idea that Cal didn't have enough along the front seven to get things done, and lots of people that were being plugged in one week and then plugged out of next week for any number of reasons, and that could have been an effect into the secondary. But in general, the t- they just need more talent back there alongside Craig Woodson, alongside Noel Williams and the Idaho transfer Marcus Williams. I think both Yates and Wag- Wagner very much provide a higher floor and lots of talent that can be tapped into from a guy who knows how to coach these defensive backs and Justin Wilcox. Yeah, so w- are, are these guys both coming in and you expect them to start right away? Are they rotation players? Wh- where do they fit? They're both rotation players as of right now. Uh, right now, the starting corner spots have pretty much been locked down. Uh, Noel Williams, the transfer, former transfer from UNLV, who's got a year plus under his belt in the program now, is starting alongside Marcus Harris, who transferred in from Idaho and has been absolutely – been one of, if not the biggest stars coming out of spring ball. He's established his brand and then some and has caught the eyes of myself and a few other people who've been observing the Bears and how they've been coming along in those abbreviated sessions. I think those two guys are locked down in the safety spots. Craig Woodson locked down one. And then the the second safety spot is probably the only one that's really up for grabs. And I don't imagine that they'll be day one starters, but there's no reason why they can't be both rotating in the corner and safety spots respectively. So Cal over the last couple of years, Thomas, has – you know, never been a, a big high school recruiting power, and I don't know that uh, they they ever really will be, even though they're in the Bay Area. It, it's just the combination of the brand, maybe some academic restrictions. They're not nearly as stringent as Stanford. These two things are not uh, even close to the same. And nowhere is that more evident than in the transfer portal, where for the second straight year, Cal has pulled in a top 20 recruiting class nationally just in the transfer portal, according to our friends at at 24-7 Sports. If you just say at at the outset, a team in the loaded Pac-12 last year that went 500 brings in a top 20 portal class and returns their their head coach and quarterback, they lost their OC Jake Spavadol to to head down to Waco and be the offensive coordinator at Baylor. But if you just said those things at the outset – I think you would look at that team and say, well, I, I think they could maybe be a seven, eight, maybe nine win team this coming season going into a, a team that or a league that's not as deep in the ACC. Do you feel that way about Cal? I feel that way to a certain extent. Uh, to me, the time for talking is over in the Justin Wilcox era. We can talk about these Lottie transfer portal rankings in terms of where Cal fits into that. We can talk about the good dynamics that are coming into practice with the offense, with the defense the coming along of the special teams at some, at this point we're in year eight. You got to win football games. There's no, is it year eight? Yeah. Yeah. Time goes by quickly. Wow. That uh, time flies. I'd say when you're having fun, I don't know how much fun Cal has had exactly, 
<laughs> bits, and, bits and pieces of fun. We'll there have been it. moments. There have been. 2018 and 2019 when we were suffocating uh, all West Coast offenses known to mankind. That was a fun time. Mm -hmm. that. Uh, no one tell Jake Browning and uh, Chris Peterson about the <laughs> horrors of Berkeley. Uh, or but, about what lightning does to a football game up in yeah, yeah. Uh, up in Seattle. What was that 2019? The yes. the lightning game against the Huskies. Yeah, that's the heck. Anyway, I got you off track there. Continue. Yeah, no, we can go on for hours about that. But at this point, year eight, Justin Wilcox era, lots of good pieces. Now you got to put them together, and there's no reason why this team cannot put them together. I like the way Mike Blesh has come around, the new offensive coordinator with his approach. He was formerly the offensive coordinator down in North Texas. And now he's making his way out here, out west, taking on additional responsibilities in being the offensive line coach last year, now the offensive coordinator this year, and to help out Fernando Mendoza, who's really, really coming along very well. Someone who attacked the middle of the field very well last year, was working up the seam with tight end Jack Andrews and wide receiver Tron Grizzell. Now it's a matter of attacking outside the numbers. Can you throw deep? Are you willing to throw deep? Because you're going to need to find a way to win games. It's not never going to be easy, especially going across country. You're going to be in the elements for at least two games, no matter what. You're going into... Big time road environments like Florida State in conference play. Can't believe I'm uttering that sentence. <laughs> and then Auburn in, uh, early in the season. You know, Cal, like I mentioned earlier, the time for talking is over. You need to go out and win games. And Cal fans, there's an expectation to win games now. Justin Wilcox sliding by with another seven win season. You're going to run into some probably some more apathy. Eight win season that will get people talking. That will get people going. And anything beyond that, okay. This is the team and program that we expect to have now because of all these transfer portal rankings. Now it's up to the coaches to, you know, start up this development and make things happen because Cal fans, certain to a certain extent, they're like, it's lame duck. We, we've done this dance seven years in a row. Now let's go break the door down. Fernando Mendoza is probably one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the ACC because he's probably not very well known to the schools in the Atlantic Coast Conference. I, I bet SMU doesn't even have much of an idea. No one in their league has has seen Fernando Mendoza in person except for Stanford, who, who's going with them to, to the ACC out of the, the, the former Pac-12, RIP. So I, I think Mendoza has a most curious career trajectory. Last year, he's the third quarterback on the depth chart for most of the year. It's Sam Jackson. It's Ben Finley. It's Sam Jackson. It's Ben Finley. It's Fernando Mendoza, and he was just clearly better than, than the other two and ran the offense really well. How good can he be, and what do you feel like Cal can accomplish with him at the helm? I think Cal could accomplish some very good things with him at the helm. I think it would be a very reasonable expectation to slot in Cal somewhere in between 6th and 10th place in total offense next year in the ACC. Not world beater by any stretch of the imagination, but a team that can go win games because of Fernando Mendoza in the offense. Put him together with Jade Knott. You put him together with tight end Jack Andrews, an offensive line group that was really good at run blocking last year. My question resides in who's going to be take the main old wide receiver one? Is it going to be Tobias Merriweather, the transfer from Notre Dame? Is Mikey Matthews going to step up in the slot, the transfer from Utah? Is Tron Grizel going to take another step, being the walk-on that no one knew last year to the scholarship player that people are going to prepare for now? Can Cal put everything together and not only do that, but do it on a consistent basis? Because – Fernando Mendoza, he's developed very well. He had he took his lumps last year, namely against Oregon and even some in parts against UCLA, despite the big victory. His development will lead Cal to bigger heights than they have seen in recent years. And so far, I think he's on the right track. Now it's just a matter of putting it all together on a consistent basis because you see it once in practice, that's cool. You see it twice in practice, that's cool. Now I need to see it not only in 11 on 11 situations, but also when you're down third and 13 down in Dope Campbell Stadium down against Florida State. You need to see it happen. You need to see a way to make plays. Are you going to go to Pittsburgh late in the year and go find a way to make a play? They go to Auburn week two. And if you were ever looking for an early season indication of where is this Mendoza guy at, is he going to be able to lead us to an eight-plus win regular season? That would be the game where you'll figure out. You don't even necessarily have to win it, I don't think, Thomas. I think you just go into that game and say, if Mendoza looks good and you know, you lose a close one, just like it was last year at Memorial Stadium in Berkeley when they should have, I'm sorry to bring that up, but yeah, they, no, they, uh, yeah, they should they should have won the game. Auburn fans would say they should have won by 10 to 15 points. Nobody played well. Both teams lost uh, yes. in that one, for, though Auburn did quite literally uh, win the ball. game. But I, I think I think a week two test down at Jordan Hare Stadium, I, I think that's going to be a, a really important a really important marker for Mendoza. I would tend to agree, and I'm going to do my best to be at that game because who wouldn't want to experience Jordan Hare down in the deep part of the South, down in September, week two. 
and like you mentioned, it's a benchmark for Fernando Mendoza. And, you know, going back to last year a little bit, I think the coaches, there was a little bit of a wanting to find the return on investment of guys like Sam Jackson, the fifth and Ben Finley guys who have a high supposed high ceiling in Sam Jackson, who's ironically now at Auburn as a, I was going to say, and you yeah. mean, you mean Auburn's newest wide receiving target. That'll be, that, that'll be <laughs> fun. And then Ben Finley, the guy who had the supposedly the higher floor coming out of NC state and now just didn't really have it. Now the coaches, they, it's easy to say they pivoted too late to Fernando Mendoza, but I'm not there every day in the meeting rooms to see who's doing what. So it's, I'm just glad that they finally found what's supposedly the right solution now. And hopefully he continues to develop as he has, because not only is he a great football player in the strides that he made last year, phenomenal ambassador for the team, phenomenal ambassador for the university. And generally you will not find someone who has a qualm about him. Thomas Dunn, right for California.com. Everything you need about the bears. Thanks Thomas. I appreciate it as always, man. Appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time. And until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.